Uh, just before you start, uh, it looks like Tara from NTLD had said, is saying she did some rearranging at her home desk after the last session and she can already feel the difference. Oh, good. Okay, when you're ready. Well, good morning, everybody. It looks like just about everybody on, the, on this session was on our Wednesday session. And what I intend to do today is just kind of continue along. I'm not gonna redo the same material. I'm gonna continue along with what we were talking about on Wednesday. Why don't we wait two or three more minutes to see if we get any, any late arrivers and then we'll, we'll continue on. Are we seeing anybody else, Corey? Not, uh, yes, we have one more. Okay, so um, there are more, there are more than uh, who attended last uh, on Wednesday and um, Mary is asking if we will have the material available uh, anywhere for those who missed it. We can provide the, the PowerPoint presentation or we can probably set up another session if we want to do that or we can provide the recording of the original. Okay. However you guys want to set that up. Yeah, that will be a discussion with Nan, me and uh, the rest of our committee to see how we're going to uh, present it to, um, to, the, uh, to the participants or anybody else who is interested. We'll give that information at a later date, but for uh, once we know, and once we know where it's going to be located. Okay. Well, the ergonomics office guide has, has a synopsis of most of what I'm talking about, and it might be a good document to send out. But like I said, let's, let's let Jeff and, and maybe Sheree take a look at it before we send it out. Well, I'm not seeing anybody else show up, so let's let's get going with this. Good morning, everybody. Um, where we left off on Wednesday was how about your wrists and fingers? And some of the things that you should be worried about with your wrists and fingers are the keyboard, how you have your mouse set up, are you using an adjustable keyboard tray? What is the angle of your impact on the on on the desk when you're when you're using these devices and what i mean by that is if you're putting pressure especially on a on a desk edge on your wrist because they're flat you're putting you're slowing the the fluid flow through your lymphatic system and your your veins and arteries and i've got a a pretty good example of that later when we talk about sit stand workstations so that's what can lead to carpal tunnel because when you when you do this when you restrict the flow you generally cause swelling and if you cause swelling that will restrict the flow even further okay and then if you're not flat in an anatomical position and now you're going to bend it even a little bit more this is extension this is flexion if you extend or flex either direction more than about 10 degrees you stop the flow even more, and that just accelerates any kind of injury or, or issue that you're having with your wrists, fingers, and hands. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about that on the next slide. And first, I wanna start off with keyboards. Traditionally, everybody has a flat keyboard. And again, what that does is when you're, when you're positioned flat on your desk, desktop, that can put pressure straight across your wrist. They work good if you have padding, if you have one of the little pads that goes on in front of the, the keyboard, that seems to work really, really well. It spreads the pressure out over a wider portion of your wrist. Can you see that? Wider portion of your wrist. And that really helps with any insult to the tissues, okay? So pads are really important. 
I should go down and get uh, one of the things that I recommend a lot, which is the, the foam, there's foam corner protectors for furniture that you use when you have young children. So if toddlers tip over and they run their head into the edge of a table, they don't cut themselves. It's less, it's less of a dramatic injury. And that, that corner tape, and it's shaped like this, and it goes right on the edge of your desk, again, spreads that pressure out a little bit wider and really makes a difference in, in the contact point of your wrist on that table edge. And if you're not set up perfectly with your arms parallel to the floor and then on top of that, that dust surface, if that's what you're using, it can make a huge difference in your comfort and overall health of your wrists. So some of the things you wanna look for in keyboards, flat, flat keyboards are kind of the default thing that we've used forever. I use one, I've got one right here. If you guys can see that, this is a Logitech, works great. I've also got one of the Ergo keyboards and they're both wireless, so I can use them with whatever device I'm using. I've got a personal laptop, I've got a, a work laptop, I've got an iPad, and they all use, they all can use the same wireless keyboards. And the, oh no, we already talked about the pad, sorry. And then the angle, when you get the angle keyboard, that's great because what it does is it takes the pressure off the front of your wrist like this and rolls it out to the side here where there isn't, isn't as much going on. There isn't, there aren't as many vessels nerves, all that kind of thing. And so if you can get yourself into an angle with a more ergonomic keyboard, that takes, again, that you're trying to limit the pressure on your wrist and that can help you over the long term. This is a better picture of one. That's a Microsoft Ergo keyboard. One of the things I don't like about this particular keyboard is it's actually, you have to be sitting up higher than it. It really needs to go on a on a keyboard tray that goes underneath your desk and we'll talk about those next. Another, another example of an ergonomic keyboard tray. All right, ergonomic keyboard, I misspoke, I apologize. Now we're into keyboard trays. And so I've got three examples here and there's a couple of things you need to kind of understand with the keyboard trays. Number one, the idea is that everything fits on that keyboard tray. If you are typing at one level, and then you're reaching up to use your mouse, that puts additional stress on your shoulder, and that can, that can lead to both neck injury and shoulder injury. So you really wanna keep everything on the same level because that keeps you in balance, okay? And everything about ergonomics is we're trying to keep you in balance in a default position. So it doesn't make worse any injury that you've had some, from someplace else. If you hurt your shoulder at home, and now you're, you're on an unequal level at work, that can really create problems with that existing injury. And so we really wanna try and put you in the most neutral position that we can. And the keyboard trays, especially these adjustable keyboard trays that are pictured on your screen right now, really go a long way for that. Last, last session on Wednesday, we talked about the height of the chair and how you need to set up your chair. Well, these keyboard trays go right in line with that and they really make the, the workstation more dynamic. A lot, of the, a lot of the TCOE workstations at Mooney have the keyboard trays. And it really, when I come in to do ergonomic assessments and evaluations, it really makes a big difference in the adjustability of the workstation. And they're really critically important if you have multiple people that are using that workstation or that position transitions regularly, you see turnover because then that allows somebody to come in and adjust that workstation for them to avoid injury downstream. Now, one of the things I want you to notice about this picture, uh, about these pictures, is every single one of the keyboard trays has a pad. This is really kind of important with the keyboard trays because they really do have a knife edge and you tend to put your wrist directly on them. So the pad isn't for your wrist itself. It's actually for this part of your hand. You put your hand there, that positions you at the right height. And it's important to understand that you want, especially if you have a smaller keyboard to fit on that tray that doesn't have this angle to it, this is where the pad would go because this allows you to put your, your hand right on that pad and puts you at the right height to use that keyboard. 
puts you in a more neutral position, if that makes sense. Okay, so all three of these have that. Um, the one you see on the right-hand side of your screen has a piece that will slide out for the mouse. I don't really recommend that. I just wanted to show a picture of that. The only time you would want to use that type of, of keyboard tray is when you only have 24 inches of space for your legs to get into. And then what you would have to do is actually take that mouse off, put it up on the desktop when you push the, push the keyboard tray back in. You know, that's one of the things I should probably talk about a little bit. These keyboard trays are not only adjustable for height, they're actually designed so they slide out into your workspace, okay? And what I mean by that is if you have the desk edge right here, that keyboard tray is gonna go from here out to here where you can use it. And that will definitely make a difference in the distance on your monitor, whether or not you need arms on your, on your workstation, a lot of different things. So you need, to, you need to be aware of that. You also need more space behind you in your workstation. So they, these particular types of, of keyboard trays work really well when you have 40 inch, 48 inches of space from the leading edge of the desk to the back of your workstation. And what that does, it allows you to move your, your chair back so you can stand up away and so you can move your chair back to use that keyboard tray further away from your normal, normal position if you're writing on the desk or doing something like that, okay? So one of the things, one of the things to talk about. Okay, so mice. Mice are the same thing as your keyboard tray. The one on the right-hand side, the Logitech, that's really the, the mouse that I use. Okay, this is a normal mouse, one, that, one that's been around for 25 years at least. It's got the, the the, the scrolling wheel and the buttons on the side and all that kind of stuff. And that just works really well for me. I don't mind a, a, a flat position at my workstation. I try and sit up a little bit higher and that allows me to use that, that mouse really well. But again, different, different conditions require different equipment. So if you're having a wrist issue, you might want to go to either a roller mouse, which is the one on the bottom left, or to a vertical type mouse, which is the one directly above that. The vertical type mouse works very, very well with the ergonomic keyboards because again, they're designed to get your wrist up onto this side where there aren't as many vessels and tendons and ligaments and all that kind of thing. The roller mouse is great if you have a wrist injury that limits your flexibility in your wrist, then you can just use your fingers to roll and scroll through whatever you need to scroll instead of moving the mouse around. And all of these are available both wireless and wired type devices. Now, one of the things with the wired type devices you need to be aware of, especially if you put them on, a, on a, an under desk keyboard tray, is you've got to have enough wire if you're gonna use that kind of device. That's why I would tend to push you more towards a wireless type device because the wires really limit, limit what you can do with that workstation. All right, so let's, okay, now I segued into how should I protect my neck and back because I kind of wanted to talk about, about this for the people that weren't in the earlier session. Now, in the earlier session, we talked about connective tissue not having a lot of blood vessels in them. So it's really important for you to get up and warm up first thing in the morning. And what I mean by that is if you look, hang on, let me get through the, some of the scrolling. All right, so the ligaments, if you look over on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see the ligaments. And the ligaments are what go from bone to bone. Tendons are from muscle to bone. Neither of those types of tissue have a lot of veins and arteries that run through them. And they depend on motion to, they're kind of like a sponge. Like when you squeeze a sponge, you squeeze the dirty water out. And then when you release the sponge, you pull the fresh and clean water back back in. And that's the same type of thing that happens with connective tissue. In your back, if you load and unload that connective tissue, it squeezes the uric acid that builds up from, from long periods of inactivity, squeezes that out and lets a, the bloodstream pick it up and let it, the body process those, those wastes more appropriately. 
And then as it relaxes and opens up, it draws good nutrients, water, potassium, sodium, things like that, that the cells need back into those tissues. So movement is really, really important, especially first thing in the morning when you've been sleeping all night, you haven't been moving very much because that allows the uric acid, lactic acid, those kinds of things to build up in your tissues. So first thing in the morning, what I recommend is that you get up and do a walk. You do, I do some push-ups in the morning, maybe some sit-ups. Um, if, be careful if you're doing squats or that kind of thing. Those aren't as good. Walking is really the best thing for you. And a lot of times when you have a back injury, the practitioners will recommend, strongly recommend that you're walking 15 minutes at a time. Okay, and the reason for it is this. We're trying to get the, we're trying to let those tissues heal. We're trying to get the movement in to pu push the excess fluid out and allow the swelling to decrease. That's another reason why you see a lot of heat and then cool because you're using the cool to prevent the, the swelling, but you're using the heat to increase the metabolism to allow those tissues to, to get the, the waste and, and excess fluid out of them, okay? So warm-ups, walking, those are all really good things. And then stretching throughout the day once you've warmed up. Now I have a routine that I go through that's kind of hard to show on the, on the screen right now that I show when I do these, these presentations in person. But one of the things I'd like to show you is, and have everybody do this with me, is I want everybody to try and touch their ear to their shoulder. Hear all that cracking and popping? I know I do. All right, then slowly roll your head around and try and touch your left ear to your left shoulder. And then go back. It feels pretty good, doesn't it? Those are the kinds of motions that you need to be doing throughout the day to keep yourself healthy. Now I'm gonna talk about stretching, but stretching is done after you warm up. And there's a pretty interesting study from the University of Michigan where they, they actually tracked soccer players over the five year period of their eligibility. And they found that the, the students that, that warmed up first without stretching tended to have about 25% less injury to connective tissue like tendons and ligaments than the, the kids that stretched. So warming up is really, really important. And I don't think I can emphasize that enough. Okay, a couple of the other things that you may wanna consider with this group is Fitbits or my wife just got me an Apple Watch, okay? It's a step counter. You can get into challenge groups where you, you challenge each other to see how many steps you can get in a day. You know, can you really make that 20,000 step level? That's pretty good. For me, that's about 10 miles of walking and I get to it once in a while. But typically I'm about 10, a 10,000 step a day guy. And that's, it's fun, especially when I'm working with my coworkers and some of you know my coworkers and we push each other to get our steps in, which definitely is gonna increase our overall wellness. Can you be the biggest loser? Can you lose the most weight? We're not talking a Trump thing, we're talking about you know, a TV show weight thing, okay? And, and the walking and the general wellness really, really helps with injuries in the workplace, believe it or not. And then, like I said, stretch to stay limber, warm up after, or warm up before, and then stretch throughout the, the day to stay limber. So some of the stretches you can do in the office, and again, this PowerPoint will be available to anybody that wants it. I don't try and hang on to any of my material. It's, I mean, the whole idea is we go home healthier or as healthy as we did when we came into work, okay? So these kind of stretches are all very, very appropriate in your workplace. You can get them done every five minutes, you know, in, in about five minutes. Um, the recommendation is you do that after, you, after you're at the workplace, an hour, hour and a half, maybe do the first round of stretching. Then maybe when you go to lunch, do another round of stretching. And then in the middle of the afternoon, maybe do it twice to keep yourself limber and to keep the stress out. Because what this really does is it, it stretches the muscles out, it helps release the tension and allows the muscles and the other tissue to get rid of that lactic acid that comes from, from just being in a, in a rigid, stiff position. If you wanna feel what that's like, I want everybody to make a fist. 
make a fist as tight as you can, and then see how long you can hold that without any kind of pain. And that's what we do to ourselves when we're sitting all day. We're sitting in this rigid position, we're holding our back up if our chairs aren't adjusted properly, and you're getting that tension. And stretching, now everybody take their, their hand and stretch it out. Stretching will allow you to you know, allow your tissues to release all that again, lactic acid and uric acid. So stretching throughout the day is very appropriate. Okay, sitting versus standing. All right, this is kind of the, the section that I gotta be careful of. And you gotta understand, I don't like st standing workstations. I think that they're, the disadvantages to them are greater than the advantages. And that's based on just looking at work comp claims and things that we see coming through. But I really wanted to go through kind of what the advantages and disadvantages of these are. All right, so sitting takes less energy, right? You won't be as tired at the end of the day if you're sitting versus standing. It just takes less energy, okay? Better support with the correct equipment. So if you have a good chair and your, your workstation is set up properly, sitting is generally a better way to go. Okay, it keeps you closer to the material that you're working on. Um, you can't trip over anything, that kind of stuff. And they're really what most workstations are set up to, to do, all right? If you do get a sit-stand workstation, you still should be sitting about half of the time, okay? And when I say half of the time, I mean a half hour of every hour, not a half of every day and then stand for every day. And we'll talk about that in a minute. All right, standing definitely requires more energy, okay? Now, there are some conditions that standing is better for. Uh, back injuries, specifically, if you're standing up straight because your chair doesn't support you correctly or puts pressure on pain centers that cause irritation, then standing is gonna be a better option for you with back injuries and some neck injuries. Um, it definitely requires more energy, so make sure you're, you're upping your caloric intake. Um, wear good shoes. Good shoes are critically important. And when I say good shoes, I don't mean nice shoes. I mean athletically supporting shoes. Uh, running shoes are very good for this. You know, if you've got to dress up for a meeting or something like that, kick your heels off, your dress shoes off, and wear your tennis shoes while you're standing at your workstation. And you may want a standing pad. And what I mean by that is it's a foam pad. They're typically three quarters of an inch thick. And you stand on that and that takes a lot of the impact off of your joints. And when I say that, I mean your knees and your hips. Okay, because that, that can be one of the detractors from, this, from the standing workstation. And then you shouldn't be standing really more than a quarter of the time. Okay, if you're standing more than a quarter of the time, you're gonna see in the next slide, I think, some of the some of the problems that occur with that so let's move on oh and then you need a big enough workstation that's one of the things i find when i'm doing a lot of workstation evaluations is we do a pretty poor job especially not at at the mooney office but out in the in the satellite areas especially at the child care centers and that kind of thing of actually giving people enough room in their workstation you really need about 48 inches from the front of your desk to the back of the workstation. If you don't have that, you don't have any place to get that, that chair out of your way when you're at a standing workstation. Okay, so some of the things that can happen with a, that can be exacerbated or made worse by a standing workstation. And what you gotta understand is your heart is a supply pump. It pushes blood out of your torso and your muscles are the return pump. And if all you do is stand statically in front of that workstation without moving and getting around, what you do is you really elevate the, the blood pressure in the dependent parts, in the lower parts, especially in your calves. And what that can do, if you look at the picture on the bottom, the two little tube looking things are supposed to be veins. And if you'll see, there are these little one-way flapper valves. And what happens is because your heart will push the blood out, the muscles contraction actually squeeze the blood out of those tissues and force it up the veins one direction back towards your core and into your heart. And pictured are these little valves. And they're the things that when your muscles relax, 
they don't let the blood just come back down into those dependent parts. It stops the flood, blood flow from your core back into your legs. If we didn't have something like that, our, our ankles would be about this big all the time, maybe even bigger than that. Okay, so you gotta have those things. But the problem is when you stand too much, you blow out those veins. And that can look like varicose veins on the back of your legs when actually it's just damaged valves. And the problem with those damaged valves is now that gives you the opportunity to get clotting build up in there and can actually contribute to a stroke. And it's one of the reasons they tell you to move around every 30 or 45 minutes on an airplane. You don't wanna to sit too long because you can throw a clot and have a problem. It's the same thing from standing too long. Now, the picture above it is an ulceration. And that, if you, if you have a family history of diabetes, and we have a lot of that in California, these ulcerations can happen if you're standing too much. And so you really need to talk to your doctor before you get a standing workstation. Um, I won't recommend them unless I actually go out and talk to an individual and see what their habits are and if they've educated themselves on what they need to do to support themselves at a standing workstation. There are several people at the Mooney office that I have definitely given my blessing to because they, they understand they're healthy enough. They've, they understand what the limitations of the workstation is and they're sitting and standing. They're not just standing and they're making sure they're getting out and walking at lunch and doing stuff like that. Those are the types of things you need to consider when you're wanting a, work, a sit stand workstation. Okay, and again, the knees, if you've got a knee issue or if you've got a hip issue, all the standing workstation is gonna do is make it worse. So we need to probably avoid it at that point. Um, if you're gonna get a sit stand workstation, there are some things that you need to do. Number one, they're very much like a sitting workstation except you're just standing. So from your elbows up, you really adjust them about the same way. You want your arms, your forearms parallel to the floor, okay? They should be level with the keyboard. So you shouldn't be reaching up like this or down. Up will definitely put some extra pressure on your neck and shoulders. Down will mostly do it to your shoulders and Makes, makes issues happen with your wrists as well, for lack of a better explanation. Um, the mouse should be right next to the keyboard, so it needs to have enough space to have your keyboard and mouse. Wireless devices are really the way to go on a sit-stand workstation. It's enough of a problem for that, that station to support the cords for your monitor. You've got at least a power cord and a, a data cord that run up there. So your, your monitor needs to be really, or not your monitor, but your CPU, if it's a desktop, it needs to be real close to that sit-stand workstation. Otherwise, you're not gonna have enough cable to lift it up appropriately. Um, it needs to be really easily adjustable. At first, the very desk and some of the other ones had these, if you reach out, they had the, the uh, kind of the latch, I guess, for uh, lack of a better term, on the sides. And you had to kind of bend over and reach way out to lift them up and down. Those cause issues. I don't really like the, those types of workstations anymore because what's happened is the companies have recognized this and made them all electronic. So you press a button and it raises and lowers by itself. And that's a much better way to go than the older type of very desk. Those are counterweighted. And if you have cables or if you put too much junk up on top of it, then it can be very difficult to lift up and down. And then again, the padded floor mats and really good shoes. And when I say really good shoes, orthotics are a good thing, especially if you're standing statically, because then there's some anatomy issues with your, with your feet. And if you're not wearing good shoes, you pronate, that throws your, your ankles out of alignment with your knees, with your hips, and that can cause a lot of problems downstream. So you really, really, really need to have good shoes when you're using a, a sit-stand workstation. The one thing with the padding is that it messes with the casters. And what I mean by that is the wheels on the bottom of your, of your chairs have a hard time with the padding. If it's soft enough to be useful, the wheels on your chairs have a hard time getting up and moving around on that. So you really need that pad to be 
easy to move back and forth. And most people won't do that, which is one of the reasons why I don't like the sit stand workstations. Oh, just another picture of that. Okay, so let's get into the laptops and risers. Again, what we're talking about is when you're at, at a seated position at a workstation, you want to be, your eyes need to be level with about the top third of the computer monitor. And what that does is it keeps you looking at the horizon and that keeps your head, neck, and spine in line, okay? And I know I've said this before with some of you, but we have some new attendees. That's the whole point of the laptop risers. If you're gonna take the laptop home and you're working from home and you're, you're sitting at the kitchen counter or something like that, you really need to have an accessory keyboard and mouse that attach to that laptop and then you get that laptop up in your viewing zone. You want the screen up high. That's why the, the device in the lower corner, what it does is it has an angle and gets that, that screen up and that's why your laptops will fold a little more open, if that makes uh, Kyle, sense. Sorry, yes, Kyle, we're at uh, 1032. Okay, so I need to, need to close this out? Yeah. Okay. I think we that's did it. Have a, a question. That was my last slide, so I think we're in really good shape. <laughs> what okay. about the Wednesday material? Do we is that going to be recorded, Corey? Um, it is being it. Uh, the Wednesday was recorded, as well as we are recording right now. The question was if it'll be available. Um, Jeff has the presentation. Uh, he will review it and we'll discuss it and see where we're going to. Uh, uh, place the presentation and videos for everyone to access. Uh, we okay. should be able to know that next week and we'll, we'll share that with everybody. You know, as a reminder too, we have uh, the ergonomic, I hate to do this damage, but the safe schools, there's ergonomic presentations in the safe schools that are available to your, your to the office of ed as well. And for something like that, um, just, just uh, uh, reach out. All you need to, to, HR you need to do is click on the it, all the, the the terrible trainings that we do to you all the time. It's the exact same link. And what you do is when you get into that link, you click on additional training, and you can you can scroll down. I'm not exactly. I think it's in environmental. It's in the environmental section, and then you can find, or you can go up into the search bar at the very top of the screen and just type in ergonomics and you can find those presentations that way as well. Okay. Okay, thank you everybody for joining. Mary is saying, saying thank you for organizing this. Now I, re, I now realize that my ergonomics are way off and I'm not going to have a heart, I'm not having a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, Thanks, and the last God. thing about that is we're kind of busy right now, but, but let, your human resources tech know that you want, if you want a ergonomic evaluation of your workstation and either myself or my partner, Rebecca, can come out and help you adjust your workstation. Yes, so yeah, just like what Kyle said, reach out to your HR technician. If you want access to safe schools, if you don't know where it is, they can help you also. Um, so we should be good. Thank you, Kyle. All right. Thank you. We'll see you next time, guys. Thanks, everybody. Okay, Kyle, I'm going to stop the recording and end here. We're good.